Hey guys, welcome back to Maker's Corner. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this cool infinity mirror clock. Now, before we get too far, if you see any haziness in the mirror, uh, that's not really there. It's just the camera is super sensitive and picks up weird little imperfections. From a normal viewing distance, you can't see any of this. This thing looks pretty darn good. That being said, there is one thing that I probably would do differently if I did this again. And that is I wouldn't use two-way mirror film. I would get a proper two-way mirror, which you can actually get one pretty reasonably priced from a, uh, a site that I will leave down in the description. So go on ahead and check them out if you decide to make this project for yourself. So this mirror is being controlled through a ESP32 using WLED, which means as an added bonus, we can connect a microphone to make the LEDs music reactive as well. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to install WLED onto your ESP32, but what I am going to do is leave a link down in the description to an amazing video by Chris Maher, who goes through everything you need to know, so check him out down the link below. As per usual, I'll leave links down in the description to all the files necessary to create this project, including step files if you feel like modifying it. Depending on the mirror you get, you may need to make things bigger or smaller, so that's why I always include step files so you guys have an easier time making changes. And I'll also have some affiliate links down in the description to all the products I used so you don't have to go hunting for them yourself. This video was sponsored by PCBWay, but we'll talk more about them and how they can help you out with this project later. So with that all out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is make a two-way mirror. For this, I'm going to be using this round piece of acrylic and some two-way mirror film. This is a pretty simple installation. You just spray a little soapy water onto the acrylic, lay your mirror film on top, and then squeegee it until it's nice and smooth. Once you're satisfied, you can then take your utility knife and cut away some of the excess. I'm not cutting super close to it just yet. I'll wait until I flip the mirror over, and then I'll use the edge of the acrylic itself to cut nice and close to the edge to make sure it is nice and flush. I'll then take my squeegee to give it one last once over. Now of course we're going to need somewhere to put this mirror, so I used my Piopoli Magneto X to print a frame which for the two-way mirror, which will be the top of our clock. Once this is done, I took my soldering iron and I pushed some M3 heat set inserts into each of the holes on this top frame. It's now time to take our two-way mirror we just created and attach it to the top frame that we just put our heat set inserts into. I put a small little bead of glue around the inner edge, and I took my two-way mirror with the mirror film facing up and set it in place. While we're waiting for our CA glue to dry, I turn my attention to the actual mirror. Now for this, I 3D printed a little drill guide, and of course my hand is in the way, because why wouldn't it be? I probably should have paid a little more attention before hitting record. I then took a diamond drill bit and drilled a 3 8 inch hole directly in the center. I actually messed up here. I was being a little impatient and drilled a little too fast and ended up actually cracking the back of the mirror. And I'll pause the video here for just a moment so you can see what I meant by that. Now fortunately, when we install our clock module, this actually won't be a big issue because it's going to cover this up, but if you do decide to use a glass mirror this is something you should be aware of go nice and slow take your time of course we're going to need it somewhere for that mirror to go so it's backwards to the magneto x to print the main housing for this project now as mentioned in the beginning of this video this project is sponsored by pcb way the main housing of this project if you decide to go with the full 10 inch version is definitely going to be way too big for most 3d printers but that's okay because pcb way can help make them for you at a pretty reasonable price they offer a wide range of materials for all your 3D printing needs, and of course, as their name implies, they can also make high-quality PCBs as well. They offer fast shipping to almost anywhere in the world, and if you use my link down in the description, you can get $5 off your first order for new customers. Thanks again, PCBWay, for sponsoring the channel. Now back to the project. It's time to install our mirror and clock module, which... A bit of a gag reel here. When I purchased these clock modules, they came in two different sizes, and I initially tried putting the smaller one in, which I did not design the mirror for, and I'm a little embarrassed at how long it took me to realize my mistake. I was trying so hard to get that nut on there, and it just wasn't going. Once I realized my mistake, I grabbed the correct one and put it in, and everything fit just fine. And as you can see, the mounting hardware for the clock module covered up our little oopsie with the drill earlier. 
I grabbed a pair of pliers to help me tighten everything down. Of course, not going too tight. This is glass after all, and we don't want to crack it. Looks pretty good to me. So let's move on to the next step, which is the LED strips. I grabbed three 20 centimeter long DuPont jumper wires, and I snipped the ends off of both sides of two of the wires and one side of one. The two that we snipped the both sides on is for our power, and one where we only snipped one side is for our data. I'll solder the black wire to our ground. The green wire is going to be for our data, and of course the red wire is going to be for positive. Once we're finished with that, we can actually install the LED strip. I'm going to feed the wires through the hole in the side of the housing, and then just stick my LED strip going along the inside perimeter of the housing itself. I actually did design a small lip in here, but, um, well, it actually works a lot better if you do the LED strips first and then the mirror. But I ended up being too lazy to take the mirror out and do it properly. Next up, it was time to move over to the P1S to print the base, which is where our mirror will connect to and also house our electronics. After this one, I also printed the support pole, which our mirror will sit on, and also act as a conduit for our wires to feed down into the electronics enclosure below. Here I'm adding some M3 HESA inserts, which will be used to attach the electronics cover. I then took the support pole, and with the help of a little bit of CA glue, I permanently attached it to the base. We can now add our DC power socket, and due to the thickness of the base, there was no way that we were going to be able to use the included nut to secure it in place, so again, I used a little bit of CA glue to permanently install this as well. I took our mirror and LED strips, and I fed their wires into the support pole, down, and into the base. And then we'll need to prepare three more wires by cutting one end off of each, and then stripping away some of the insulation to expose the wire inside. Before going any further, I'll take some heat shrink tube and put them over the two wires from our DC power jack. Now we're going to take two of the three wires we just prepared, and we're going to solder them to the black negative wire coming off of the LED strip. We'll then do the same with the third wire, but this time we'll connect it to the red positive wire coming from the LED strip. I'm now going to take the wires that we connected to the negative lead from the LED strip, and we're going to solder that to the black negative wire on the DC jack. Once the solder joint has cooled, we can take our heat shrink tube, slide it over the connection, and then using my trusty pickle lighter, we'll give it a little heat and shrink it down. We'll then repeat this exact same process, but this time with the other wires coming off of the red positive power lead from the LED strip. With all of our wires soldered, I then carefully pulled the mirror off of the support post just enough to get some CA glue in there, push it back down, and lock that in place. Now, I'm fully aware that that might have been a little difficult for some people to follow, so I made this admittedly janky looking wiring diagram to help you guys out. You may have also noticed that in this wiring diagram, we have the microphone module for the sound reactive part of this, which we're about to get into next. I'm going to solder the headers onto the microphone module, so that way we can easily connect it to the ESP32 using some DuPont jumper wires. Now, I swear I'm better at soldering than this, it's just for whatever reason, anytime a camera is rolling, all of my soldering skills just go straight out the window. I couldn't even explain why it annoys me, just as much as it's probably annoying some of you watching me butcher this thing. I'm so sorry. But with that soldering horror show out of the way, we can attach our jumper cables to the microphone and then over to the ESP32, which we're now going to need a way to mount inside of the enclosure here. So back over to the trusty P1S to print a bracket to mount it on. Admittedly, I probably could have designed a better bracket, but this is honestly the best I could do at 4 a.m. We're going off of zero sleep. At the end of the day, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to work. I'll then add some M3 heat set inserts, which is how the second half of this bracket will lock the ESP32 into place here in just a moment. So the way this bracket works is it simply slides into place in between the wires with the USB port side facing towards those little flimsy little indexing pins, which is how we'll center it. And then I'll just use some M3 screws, get it in place, give it a quick test fit, once I'm happy with that, I'll use a little more CA glue to permanently attach it. 
As for the microphone, I didn't really have the patience to design something for it, so I just crammed it in there. And then we'll 3D print a cover so that all of our wires and electronics aren't just flopping around in the breeze. And then this cover just gets attached using some M3 screws. Now, of course, this clock wouldn't be a clock without some cool hands to go on there. So I used my Saturn IV Ultra using some Soriatech green resin. If you don't have a like an SLA printer, you could probably get away with using some translucent green filaments on a FDM printer. These clock hands are designed to be a friction fit, just like the original hands that came with the clock module. And I was super happy that they fit perfectly on the first try. So now I just have to pop the battery in and we're good to go. The last step is to attach our two-way mirror that we made in the very beginning. You'll notice that this piece has some indexing pins that align with some holes in the main housing. This just helps you get everything lined up perfectly so that when we go to put the screws into the back, they, everything just lines up and goes in nice and easy and smooth. For this, I'll be using some M3 screws again. This time they are 25 millimeter so that it can reach all the way through and get to the heat set inserts on the other side. And just like that, this project is officially complete. So the only thing left to do is plug it in and see how it looks. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I hope you guys are too. Again, if you're interested, there will be links down in the description for everything you'll need. If you did enjoy the video, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. It definitely helps out small creators like myself. Once again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring, and I look forward to working with them on future projects. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.